Tuesday, April 4th, and this is our live video chat. I hope that everyone is having a wonderful day. It's snowing here today, which is fine with me. We haven't had much snow, so I'm really happy about having all the snow. So I've got my bunny cup getting ready for Easter. A funny story about this cup. I went into Walgreens to look for a new Easter cup. I, I have a mug that's got a chick on it, but I wanted a bunny. And I, I was looking at their Easter cups, their Easter mugs. Good morning. And um, I realized after I bought this one that this really isn't a coffee cup. It's an egg dyeing cup. <laughs> I don't care. I love it. It's nice and big. Holds a lot of coffee. <laughs> Clink in if you're there. Hi, Elizabeth. Well, today we have um, a couple of things to talk about. I'm going to start first. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Petra. I'm going to start first with answering a question that I got, and then I'm going to get into the meat of our subject about how crochet in the arts. Good morning, Sharon. Yes, I'm feeling much better. Just in case you're wondering, last uh, Thursday I had to cancel our live video chat because I had a horrible migraine. I never, ever get migraines. I can count on these three fingers how many times in my life I've had a migraine. It's just not something I get. And so I had a bad one last week. Hopefully, I will never that'll never happen again. Hello, Dawn. Hello, Michelle. Oh, I'm so glad you're all here. Now, I had a question just early this morning, and I thought I'd answer that real quick first. And then we'll get into our subject, the healing power of crochet and art. Now, if you have crocheted my basket that I made with the Red Heart Soft Essentials, or you can use any Chunky, the question I got was, if I fill it with candy, how do I keep it sturdy? And what you need to do is just draw, get a piece of cardboard. And the best cardboard is the, the work is, good morning, Karen, is the cardboard off like the back of a book or an old coloring book or an old uh, uh, tablet. Because you don't want it real sturdy, but just enough to hold it. Put this down on it, draw around it with a pen, then cut it out. Let me slide this in here and slide it in and you'll be amazed there we go how much sturdier it will be and then you can fill it full of goodies without it falling out i'm using mine for decoration so i hadn't really thought about it needing to be sturdy so i thought i would just pass that along and this works for any crochet basket or bag or anything that you made that has a flat round or square bottom just cut a piece of cardboard and stick it down inside there and it'll help it stay sturdy well, I hope you all um, have clinked in. Y'all got your coffee this morning? Hey, tell me your temperature. I'm just so curious. It's 34 degrees here today. It's snowing like crazy. But I love it because we need the snow. So let me know what your temperature is today. We're in your, as Al says, neck of the woods. <laughs> all righty. Hi, Stacy. I'm glad you made it. <clears throat> all right. So let's, first of all, um, our subject today, I know I'm usually pretty silly and have a lot of fun, and I want to keep it light, but our subject today is how can crochet or the arts be healing? I'm going to grab my glasses. I'll probably pop them on back and forth because uh, I want to read you. I've got some quotes here. One of those quotes, this is from, it's, her name is Twyla uh, Tharp. Art is the only way to run away without leaving home. I believe that. <laughs> One thing I have discovered, okay, let me let me explain to you a little bit about myself. There's no place I'd rather be than home with my crochet in hand and a dog on each side, unless my grandkids are here, then I want a grandkid on each side. <laughs> but I love being home. I love to crochet. It is my safe place. It is my happy place. And um, I, I have always been one. I don't like a lot of crowds. I don't like a lot of people. I don't like a lot of noise. And when I get in a large crowd, even at church or at the mall or even at Walmart, oh, my word. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I just, I leave the house and all I can think about is I need to go home. I need my crochet and I need my hook. And sometimes my heart beats and my ears, my heart pounds in my ears. And it's really something I thought that I was like the only one that ever felt that way. So I got to talking with some of my other crochet friends and just, you know, some of them had made a comment about, oh, I can't stand this or that or whatever. So I just asked a few of them and they all said the same thing. 
and something that you know that they love their crochet space that that is their safe calm you know place to be um, when life has struggles or there's something going on they run to their hooks and yarn and um, and I'm the same I'm the same way and um, it's a good thing because you can't eat yarn and yarn has no calories <laughs> But the truth of the matter is, hello, Trish. I hope I said hello to everybody. I'm so glad to see you all here. So this particular subject reaches out to a lot of people. And I want to preface this with saying, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist or psychologist. I'm not a chiropractor. I'm not any kind of medical doctor. I'm not a physician's assistant. I'm not a nurse. None of those things. I'm just an everyday person who struggles a little bit with anxiety and I know that a lot of people struggle a lot more than I do so I don't want to belittle that in any way being I've never been diagnosed um, with de clinical depression or anxiety it's just me those are very serious issues and so I want you to understand that I am not belittling that in any way I'm just explaining my experience and what I have found along the way okay so let me give you another quote this one is by pablo picasso let me get it right he's he's an artist you all know how, uh, pablo picasso's work he says art washes from the soul the dust of everyday life and the thing about art and creative people and it does seem that a lot of people who are artists struggle with self-doubt and self um just not just self-worth and we don't and we don't see ourselves as good enough a lot of times and I think a lot of times that's because the internet is so hard on us um, I've had people just chew me up one side and down the other because I forgot the H in chain one you know and I have my patterns tested I have of course people are used to the way I write I may have to get some new testers because they're used to how I write but the thing is an artist whether you paint whether you play the piano whether you sing whether you do uh, polymer clay, knit, any of the creative arts, I think these people, like me, we overthink things. Because we're so creative in our brains, I've, I've always said, open up 3,000 browsers on your internet, on your computer, and that's my brain. Because my brain is going in a thousand directions at once, sometimes I can't even sleep. That's why I stopped watching anything political. Because I wanted everybody's problems on both sides of the of the carpet and in the middle to all be solved. And I don't want them just solved. I want them solved now. <laughs> you know, so my brain is always going in 100 miles an hour. And I have trouble going to sleep at night because designs pop into my head. And, oh, I could have changed this. Or why did I use that stitch? You know, or even a comment that I might get that someone says, that's neat. And I go, what do they mean by that? What is what? That's neat. What, it's not pretty? Oh no, oh, you know, so I have to, I have to stop doing that to myself. And I think that that's the other thing about people who are creative. We are our worst critics. And so when we are, because we're somewhat of a perfectionist and I think that we want it to look a certain way. And when it doesn't look the way we want it to look or the wording isn't the way we want it to be, we're really hard on ourselves. And we have to remember that everybody sees things differently, even artists. We see things differently and don't don't count yourself short crochet is definitely an art if you go on Ravelry or even Google crochet pictures or whatever you can see that everybody's take is different you know people have certain ways of doing things that are their ways that they've developed I, you know I do things different all the time and I, I will get occasional comment that says I wasn't taught to do it that way this is the right way well you know everybody has their own way and and you can do it your way you know like the magic circle not everybody wants to do it that way you can do it your own way and that's the neat thing about art creativity or creativity I can't even say it creativity so let me let me just share with you a few things that I found and I'm gonna pop my glasses on again I'm really sorry about the glare I'll try not to look up when I have them on I played and played with my lights today turning them every other different direction and I couldn't get rid of the glare so I'm gonna look down okay so these are things that I have learned being a somewhat person with somewhat anxiety and an artist okay the first thing I learned is that art can cheer you up 
and it can lift us up. And the reason that it does that is because when you're concentrating, <laughs> Max is behind me pulling that scarf off my, my chair. <laughs> when you're concentrating on what you're doing, you may think, oh, I'm stressed out. I'm trying to get it right. But you're pushing out the rest of the world and you're, you're zeroing in on that one thing. Because most artists, like I said, our brains are in all different directions. And especially if you're doing a pattern that you don't know, I always find if I purchase the pattern, I'm more intent on getting it exactly like the pattern writer. And so I've had to learn to kind of relax that and realize that, you know, I, I like what she or he did, but maybe I can change that take a little bit. But it cheers you up and it uplifts you in your soul because you're, you, you're creating something. And another thing is that, that when you make something for someone else, don't even care that they like it or not. The idea is that you made it with your own hands and then you gave it away. That is where the focus needs to be. Because if someone isn't someone who, who appreciates crochet and yarn or knitting or whatever art you, that you're doing, they're not going to appreciate it the way you do. For instance, my, my daughter-in-law makes beautiful cakes. I can't do that. My, my granddaughter keeps telling me I need to practice so I stop burning things. But um, I get too distracted, and that's part of the issue with, like, just baking cookies. I get distracted doing other things. And, and I was probably, as a child, the typical ADHD child. But back when I was a kid, you know, they didn't know how to um, help you. They just kind of let you be. And I'm kind of glad they did because it made me even more creative. So got in a lot of trouble. But <laughs> So anyway... <laughs> I know I always say that so anyway but any the, but anyway the thing about the cheering yourself up is because we're our worst critics and when I'm sitting there and I'm and I'm crocheting my mind is on what I'm doing and it just makes me feel a lot better another thing that happens is that art can be physically healing art actually let me read this to you art actually changes every cell in your body and can change our immune system and help our blood flow better and the, the, the take on that is when you are concentrating on one thing and you're relaxing and you're doing your thing, whether you're painting or you're singing or you're playing the piano um, or, I mean, have you ever watched those guys that play the saxophone? I always say they're in Nana land because they shut the whole world out and they're concentrating on that music. And that's the way art is. You're shutting everything out. It enriches your, your cells in your body and makes good things happen. And um, then when you're relaxed and you're concentrating, your, your heart starts beating in a good rhythm. Your blood flows. And, and so then, and then your immune system can work. And that, that's another way that art and crochet can be healing. The, uh, and I already kind of covered this. Art can change our thinking and our self-worth. Because we have to remember that it doesn't matter if anybody gets what we're doing. It doesn't matter if they don't like what you made. And it doesn't matter if nobody at all understands. It's kind of like when they first start doing a lot of the um, repurposing art. I didn't get it. I really didn't get making things out of plastic or metal or whatever and repurposing. And, and so I thought, oh, whatever. But that's their thing. Of course, I understand it now. I, I like finding things like taking my, my T-shirts and cutting them in and making yarn or, or my husband's old work jeans and making, you know, denim yarn out of it and stuff like that. I understand it now to have a better appreciation. But the person who was doing that, they didn't care what I thought. They were feeling good and understanding their purpose and doing what they love. And that's how it can help your own self-worth. Sometimes we have to crowd out the world. Crowd out the voices and just listen to our own. And then we can, you know, bring our self-worth up. You know, the Internet has, with the especially YouTube, has become such a, a oh, just a harsh place. And sometimes um, I'll get a, a comment and I'll think, why? <laughs> you know, of course, my all my comments, in case you ever comment and you wonder where they're at, Mine are set up so that I approve everything because I had someone kind of, anyway, but they'll be there. Just go back and look for them. <laughs> the, the, another thing that I have found about art and crochet, knitting and other things like that is that it's freeing. 
And that goes along with what I was just talking about. Um, one of the neat things about crochet is, for instance, I don't know why I put my glasses back on. I'm not reading. <laughs> for instance, when my mom got really sick with breast cancer before she passed away, I loved making her things because it made me concentrate on how much I loved her and still love her. And it helped me concentrate on her and making something for her. And whether she ever wore the hat or the scarf or whatever blanket I was making her, it didn't matter because I was, it was, it was a freeing feeling of giving up that burden for a while and just thinking about her. And, um, it can also help with our past hurts. I think that we all have things in our past that hurt us. We're humans, you know, and, and our words can hurt and there can be physical hurt and different things. And if we can just release that and put that feeling into what we're doing, you know, you've seen a lot of artists that paint pictures that are freeing to them because of maybe they were raped as a child or, or there was a death in the family that was a murder or something that was so intense that they couldn't let go. And, and I thank God I have never had to face something quite that terrifying. And I, and I hope that no, no one I ever know has to. But there are hurts out there. And there's a whole lot more of them than I can ever mention. You know, even words are hurtful. But when we, when we go into our art and our crochet, we can release those. And we can put that, that energy of our pain into what we're doing and really create some wonderful things. Okay, and that's, that's something for me. When I let those things that make me mad or, or um, hurt me in some way, when I release those, for some reason, it's like my brain is opened up to more creativity. And I come up with some really great uh, patterns that I love. You know, what? You know, some, there's some of my patterns people are like, what was she thinking? But maybe it was one that, you know, helped release some of that burden. So, and, and the last thing is, is when we give our art away, and I've talked about this before. Yes, I sell some of my patterns, of course, to help pay for my dogs, uh, my rescue dogs, medical bills and things like that. But the main purpose, when I make something, and I give it away, you know, I talked about this a little bit earlier, especially if they love it, of course, that makes us feel wonderful. But it's the, the act of getting our mind off our own pain. You know, just like with my mom, when she was going through breast cancer, I was hurting, I was worried about losing her. And um, I, I would put that passion into what I was making for her. And I would try to do the very best for something for her. And then I would give it to her. And my, my mom was not very crafty at all. She it just wasn't her thing. But she, she sang beautifully, and that was her release. And But she loved all the things that I made, and she would wear them. You know, even for me, even if it was a little, you know, when, when she went through chemo and something, if you've never gone through that, even in the summertime with all the air conditioning blowing across your naked head, she needed a little hat sometimes. <laughs> And so even in the summer, she would wear the things that I made her, and it made my heart feel good. So <clears throat> I think, uh, like I said, I'm not a doctor or a psychiatrist or psychologist, or I'm, I'm just, you know, an everyday woman that's gone through a little bit of anxiety. So let me leave you with one more quote, and then, and then we're going to get into some more happier things. So the main thing I want you to understand, here's the quote. This one is from Unknown, and, and let me grab my glasses to get it right. It says, art undeniably is conductive to happiness. And I love that quote because I've always felt that happiness is a choice. When we're going through something that's hard, the death of a loved one, a sickness, an illness, you know, sometimes my, my daughter lives in Oklahoma and sometimes I miss her so much because I just want to talk, you know, and throw yarn at her <laughs> because, you know, she's, Elizabeth of Kelly's Clips and Crochet Creations. But anyway, when I have those feelings that I just feel like, ah, oh, you know, the anxiety, I got to get out of there. If I can just sit down for a few minutes, you know, grab my chihuahuas, one on each hip, and sit down with my yarn and my crochet hooks. And even if I'm crochet something I already know how to do, 
it it just releases that burden and it releases that um, that heaviness and I can feel comforted. So that's my take on the healing powers of crochet. So the other thing I want to tell you is get your, your a good yarn bag and put all your extra yarn balls in it and a couple of hooks that you don't use every day. Some of your you know, maybe some cheap plastic ones or something so that you've always got a yarn bag with you. This has helped me a lot because I'm going to a lot of different um, doctor's appointments right now. And it's helped me a lot because, <clears throat> excuse me, coffee. <laughs> when I go and, um, you know, you're always waiting in the doctor's office. They, you know, be there at 10 and they get you at 1030. That whole time I'm a nervous wreck. So if I can just pull out some cotton yarn and a hook and whip up a, a washcloth pattern that I already know, it can get my mind off that for a little bit and get me to settle down. So that's just something that I do that helps me a lot is always have that yarn bag with you. You know, stuff it with stuff you don't use every day. And another neat thing that you can do is if you whip up a washcloth, give it to your doctor. <laughs> Everyone needs a cotton washcloth, right? <laughs> All right, so let's talk about some fun and happy things What's going on this week at Posh Pooch Designs? So um, last week we, we didn't really get to, um, let me get a drink of coffee, I'm getting dry. Besides, I want you to see my cup again. Okay, we didn't really get to talk last week because I, we didn't have the video. So I have a, a lot of things, I'm going to try not to take too long. The first thing is we released the diamond, the April diamond six inch square. We released the pattern photo uh, tutorial and video yesterday and we're like I said before I don't know if, if I said it on but anyway we're doing a square a month and the pattern is um, inspired by each month's birthstone and April's birthstone is the diamond or the clear crystal both of them depending I always say depending on whether you're at the store or the jewelry store it depends on what it is <laughs> but I really liked it I did the video with the blue and cream just to make it a little bit easier to see. The other thing we did were the chickies. Chicky, chicky, chicky. You can stuff these or you can leave the bottom open and use them for an egg uh, cozy. And I'm making a bunch of these in some bright colors because I'm going to go to Easter party and I hope I, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, I'm making, I'm going to do a video on how to make a lavender bath bomb using an egg, uh, plastic egg, uh, you know, that you stuff at Easter time. So, but I'm not going to tell you yet because <laughs> I want to make sure I do it right, so I'm going to practice a few times. So that will probably do um, next week or so. The other thing we did this week, or last week, was my, this is my uh, doll, 18-inch doll. They fit the American Girl Dolls um, spring hat. And I made this for my granddaughter last year in some bright colors. I think it was like a coral. And I had a couple of people ask me if I could do the video. So I went ahead and did the video for the doll. And then hopefully this week we'll get the doll, the hat for the child. This is a child size hat. So you can do the Dolly and Me hat and uh, matching hats. And oh, here's the yellow one that I did. And the, the video I'm going to do the matching like this one. I thought it said a little more summery with that kind of light blue and uh, yellow. It looks like a daisy. We did that this week. Now this one we did is the, it's called the Soft Chains Cow. And it's really neat because you can use any any type of yarn and any type of crochet hook. And it's just basic chains. Let me show you this up close. <clears throat> it's six chains and then a single crochet. And you're doing that single crochet in the bars of the single crochet, not the top. And you get, it looks like a little knit row and it's really pretty. This one is made with America, uh, American, American. This one is made with Red Heart Treasures, and I can't remember the exact name, but it's a Red Heart Treasures, which is a worsted weight four. This one up here is made with the Red Heart Soft Essentials, and it's nice and thick. And then this one is made with the Red Heart uh, Americana that's just worsted weight number four. So the way you do the pattern is you can make it as long as you want, or as, as long as you want, or as thick as you want, and then you just choose whatever yarn you want, Use the suggested hook off the yarn that you pick. If you do the, the soft essentials, it takes one skein. This is one skein of the Americana, and this is half a skein of the treasures. 
So, but it's it's a fun, fun pattern, has tons of possibilities. Um, that's one we did this week. Oh, and then this one is going to be released. Actually, we did this one last week. This one is going to be released this week. And I, I this one is so funny because this is the yarn called Lemonade. I think it's called Lemonade Shop or something. Lemon, well, I totally forgot. Lemonade, I think, from the Karen Cakes. And in the middle of it, there was a knot. And I, it was one of the first ones that I did. And so I just kept going. I left the string on there so you could see the knot. It's right there. And it switches over to this green color. And then um, it has like a light, light green and goes to this bright yellow. Well, um, I like that. And it's just, it's a beautiful shawl that you can, it's, I'm calling it spring into summer because the open weave lace. And then you uh, add two big buttons so that you can, <clears throat> Come here. Wrap it around you, and if you want to button it, you can or not. It's 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 real versatile. It's just a beautiful, easy lace shawl. But the funny thing about this yarn is when I went to use another one of the same one, there was no green in it. This is the only one that has this green stripe in here. And I'm thinking uh, maybe somehow two different ones, like one ended and they started the next one or something when they were making it. And so it's really unique <laughs> because I love, I love the gray and yellow. I always have loved the gray and the yellow, but it went from the gray. See how the, the, the little bit of the gray there is short. Usually you have long stripes and it should have gone from this gray. Um, I believe this gray to the, it should have gone to this yellow, but there's this big group of green and yellow in it. And then it goes to this grayish and then this, this yellow. So it's just kind of fun how that turned out. And I just love it. And, of course, I love yellow. Yellow is my favorite color. So anyway, that's what's going on this week at Posh Pooch Designs. And, again, I hope everybody has a wonderful Tuesday. And remember this. The Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. That means that God made us wonderful. And no matter whether we have flaws, of course we do, <laughs> or um, however shape we're in, we're wonderful. And we all have purpose. And uh, I hope that you will find the healing that crochet can be. <laughs>